Good afternoon or good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome. My name is Dr. Stephen Larmer. I'm the Senior Manager of the Genomics Program at CMEX. Uh, I also function as, as the Technical Lead and, and Senior Researcher on Immunity Plus. Uh, this is something that I've been working on for about the last five years, so my entire career with CMEX, um, doing various research to, to validate and to improve the immunity. Today I'm going to be spending uh, a few minutes with you here just answering some of the questions that we've received as well as any of your live questions on Immunity Plus. So if you have please feel free to type them in the comments as we go along here and I'll try to answer those as best as possible. I might just wait a minute or two here um, and, and just wait for a few more people to filter in. Uh, but while, while I do that, I might just give you a little bit of background for anyone who maybe, uh, who maybe isn't as familiar with Immunity Plus. So it's a, it's a technology that was developed at the University of Guelph, a uh, technology that was about 25 years of research in the making. And so in that, in that 25 years, it was a, a really a long process of perfecting how do we best test an animal for the capacity of their immune system. So the ability to respond to different bacteria and different viruses that the cows are going to interact with every day on the farm. Make sure we can detest, uh, we can detect the robust ability of the immune system to respond to any pathogen, meaning that no matter what disease comes along, those, those dairy cows uh, are going to be able to respond quickly and effectively to that potential, to that potential threat. So um, just to get started here, I do have a, a list of a few questions that have been sent through on, on various uh, avenues of social since this was posted last week. So I might just jump into to trying to answer a few of those. I see a few of, of my CMEX colleagues on here. Uh, Mike Huskins, hello Husky, hope you're doing well. Um, so to, to jump into to some of these questions, uh, the first one I have is, is what is the, the main difference between Immunity Plus and other health traits? And, and I think the main difference, and I maybe already alluded to this a little bit, is that ability of Immunity Plus to be really robust to any potential threat that that, that, that cow might, uh, might encounter. Meaning no matter what the disease, whether it's something they commonly encounter every day like mastitis or something that may only be really, really rare, new pathogens, things that may develop in the environment over time, because we're breeding for that robust, broad immune system response, we're able to really breed cows that are going to respond to absolutely any potential threat. Um, the other piece is, is in doing that, in, in really breeding for the overall immune system, we get some other really positive results. That being animals who have stronger overall immune response systems will have more circulating antibodies. That means that they're going to be able to respond better to a vaccine because those, those circulating antibodies will, will really be what responds to that vaccination. The other piece there is they'll also put more of those circulating antibodies from their blood into their milk or into their colostrum. And so with that, with that improved response in the colostrum, we have, we have a secondary impact that we have healthier calves from those immunity plus. Um, so really the main, the main differences compared to this is, is we're breeding for a more robust immune system instead of the specific ability to respond to one or two specific pathogens. So if we look at selection for, for resistance to mastitis, what you're gonna end up seeing is selection to respond to two or three key bacteria that are the most common causers of mastitis whatever the country of evaluation um, of that genetic evaluation is. So I see one question coming in here live already. Um, so the, the question from Dan here is why use Immunity Plus if I already picked sires off of DPR, SCS, DPR Productive Life and how does it correlate with those values and that's a great question. And, and I don't think it's something we're saying need to use always one or the other. I think these are technologies that work tandem. So when we, when we think about the, the traits listed here, DPR, SCS, productive life, these are, these are talking about those, those general health and, and they're gonna be really specific to the countries they were evaluated in. So most of these are, you're talking US traits, they're gonna be they're gonna be weighted towards the average disease incidence on a US dairy farm. Meaning if, if you're picking something like productive life, you're gonna you're be selecting for why cows do or don't get culled in the United States across an average dairy farm. And, and we all know that no dairy farm is perfectly average, but you're gonna weight those reasons for culling 
in the productive life evaluation by how often they happen in the database that that's used. And that's really valuable to, to make positive change there and, and to, on an average dairy farm, increase the amount of time you expect an animal to be on that farm. But the nice thing about Immunity Plus is it gives that robust response specific to certain diseases. And so when we talk about general health, selecting for something that gives you, gives you resistance to any potential disease and not just the specific diseases that are, that are most common on dairy farms gives you that ability to make sure you're guarded against threat. Um, in terms of the correlation with those other values, everything you listed there, we do see a, a generally positive correlation, uh, although fairly moderate with Immunity Plus when we look in our data meaning that they do pick up some of the gain from each one by selecting for them individually as well. So they're going to, they're going to complement each other in, in some ways because um, you're talking about both the, the, the robustness of the immune system with Immunity Plus, but also the specificity of the immune system, uh, as well as some other things there. I mean, productive life specifically, you're going to be talking about how they handle transition cow issues that may not be related as well so there's there's additional value whereas immunity plus is really going to be much more focused on making sure that 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 animal can handle pathogen challenges when they happen so we're really focused on the ability to to interact and then deal with pathogens and then the downstream effects from that are healthier cows are able to put more energy towards reproduction towards feed efficiency towards all those other things that that we want to see cattle do efficiently and effectively Another question uh, that came in beforehand was what is the reliability of the genomic test? So we do have a genomic test in Holsteins for, uh, for Immunity Plus, and, and we are currently working on developing another one in Angus cattle. Um, so for both beef on dairy as well as beef on beef systems, we're, we're working on being able to, to measure and, and, and breed for robust immune systems in beef cattle as well. Uh, but the reliability of that genomic test is, is about uh, 50 based on the theoretical reliability. Now, the challenge with, with all reliabilities of, of genomics is they are generally um, full validation sets all the time. But that's a very similar theoretical reliability to most other health traits that are measured, um, which given, given how, we, how we measure Immunity Plus is actually quite impressive because it is expensive to measure, it takes a long time. So we have a fairly small reference population um, but because it's highly heritable and because we're really measuring directly on the biology of cattle, we're able to increase that reliability. So by, by really specifically measuring how well the immune system inside the cow works, the true biology of that animal, we're on is having a biological difference and we're removing the impacts of, of environment and different management systems. And by doing that, we're making sure that we're actually making that's going to be positive and that's not going to have any potential unforeseen consequences by selecting on something that may be more environmental or management based that can have have unintended consequences and so that that gives us a higher reliability of selection though we have a bit of a smaller reference population um, another question that came in beforehand is do we have any up-to-date stats on immunity plus sired um, versus other animals uh, and is that data set only Canadian or is it is it international? And and the answer to that is is we did publish a paper in 2017, and I know that's been three years uh, on this, but that's the odd validation we've done on Immunity Plus versus non. But we continue to do herd by herd evaluations, uh, and we continue to see the same results where animals have anywhere between about five and 20 percent less disease incidence on average, depending on what disease we're looking at. Um, that being said, this is something that we're, we're working on this year and we're trying to bring in a, a much larger data set to really, to really robustly validate not only in Canada or the United States, but, but globally, how are Immunity Plus sired animals performing relative to their herd mates uh, in, a, in a very large standardized data set to look uh, at least on some farms with, with really good um, data recording. How, how that impacts their usage of key antibiotics as well as we see more and more pressure for dairy farms to reduce their usage of antibiotics on farm. Hi Juan Carlos, uh, welcome. Joining from Ecuador, thank you for joining today. Similar um, vein to that international validation is, is I got the question, 
is have we looked at other diseases beyond the normal the normal um, gamut of North American diseases? So so possibly local endemic diseases. And the nice thing about the theory behind Immunity Plus is that we're certain it is going to work for for all diseases that are bacterial or viral in nature, because we're really selecting on that backbone of the immune system, the ability of the immune system to to mount a response to to any potential um, threat. We have seen some validations we, we've done validations in in asia the middle east in africa in a lot of countries in the world to make sure that it's working in different farms around the world but again that the real key here is that the the theory behind immunity plus and then the base are where that cow in the world is um and so that's that's really that's really valuable um to to be sure that no matter what diseases you foresee on your farm that you will see a positive impact uh, uh... Uh, so we got another question. When, when genomic heifers are you going by DWP or Immunity Plus? Uh, so DWP is a is a proprietary index from from Zoetis that measures um, the U.S. net merit with with an increased value on Zoetis's internal health traits. And so um, it's something that that CMEX measures on all of our bulls and, and we mark it off of. But most of our internal function, um, is done to try to increase immunity plus as well as to increase overall merit simultaneously. Merit indexes um, and, and DWP may get some weight depending on, on certain matings, but in general terms, the focus in, in, in our internal program and, and what, I would, what I would do if I was running a dairy farm is, is really looking at, at overall merit uh, and immunity plus, but, but making sure that that overall merit is relevant to your dairy farm and not necessarily just relevant to the average, in this case, dairy if we're talking about DWP um, as that's kind of where the theory behind that index comes from is, is average values on a, on a commercial U.S. dairy. And so having a custom index built to your farm where you can immunity plus with the appropriate amount of weight in that selection index is really the, the most valuable way to make sure that you're going to make profit given your circumstances on your dairy farm. Um, so another another question um, that we got before the the session here was was how can a bull be high for immunity plus and low for metabolic disease or for livability? So so other other traits that in theory are are positively correlated to immunity plus. So going back to the previous question, um, those other traits are positively correlated, but we can always have exceptions where where a bull is immunity plus but is low for those type of traits. And specifically talking about metabolic or livability, that, that may be an, an example where that, where that bull does have problems with, um, with that transition period for reasons outside of the immune system. So reasons that may do, be due to how they handle energy balance through the, through the transition period, and that may lead to more metabolic disease, which isn't necessarily directly impacted by Immunity Plus. We, we generally see positive impacts. Um, but there's no direct link there. We're just selecting for animals that handle pathogens better. And so metabolic disease is, is, is certainly very, very important on dairy farms and something that can be selected alongside to make sure that, that none of those issues happen. And when that happens, we certainly expect those animals. A bull with, a, with, a, with let's say, an extreme negative proof for metabolic disease may also have a lower livability or, or expected lifespan um, because of, of those metabolic diseases, and it may have nothing to do with how well they can respond to separate and really what Immunity Plus is focused on. So again, there's a lot of value in, in weighting these things um, together and, and not selecting solely for, for one or the other, um, but Immunity Plus can certainly provide a lot of value. There aren't additional challenges along with that metabolic transition period that, that once there are pathogens introduced that those animals handle them quite effectively. Uh, another question um, that, that came in before the, ses the session, and, and this is going back to kind of the correlations between Immunity Plus tied to fertility. And what we do see correlations, so just the correlation of, of your immunity status versus, versus any of the fertility index, whether it be Canadian, U.S., international fertilities, we see a slight, um, but generally fairly slight, so, so almost no relationship from a proof standpoint. Um, but in our validation data set, when we at large dairy farms with, with tens of thousands of cows, we generally see that Immunity Plus sired animals 
um, require about 0.2 less services per conception, which is, which is an effective conception rate almost 5% higher than their herd mates, all else being equal. Um, and, and that's something we've attributed to those, those healthier cows having less issues around the transition period or early in lactation likely um, to be ready when they, when they have that first service, as well as potentially having less issues around that breeding time, um, making sure that they're able to, to conceive and to have a successful pregnancy as well. Uh, I've got a couple questions here, um, but if, if anyone has any questions as we go along here, please please type them into the chat to make sure that uh, that I'm not missing your questions before we wrap up this session in a few minutes. So the last couple questions I have, um, one that, that is a little trickier maybe is, is why doesn't CMEX publish direct um, immunity plus values? Why do we just delineate a bull as immunity plus or not? And this kind of goes back to the theory behind, behind this and, and working with the group at the University of Guelph, Dr. Dr. Bonnie Millard, who's the inventor of this technology. And if we, if we go straight to, a, to an, a value, we could potentially lead to putting too much emphasis on either the bacterial or the viral system versus making sure that we're selecting for animals that have a balance of the two. And the ratio of pressure we put on bacterial immunity versus if, even if they're both high, if the, ratio, um, if the ratio gets a little too far off, foresee some issues down the road. And so that's something we want to we wanna balance. And so that's something that we've, uh, we've tried to, to manage. Uh, I've got another question here is, is do immunity plus cows produce better quality colostrum? Uh, the answer to that is, is yes. Um, so one of the early studies that Dr. Millard and her group showed that um, certainly do produce higher quality colostrum, both looking at total antibodies as well as specific antibodies. Um, and that's something that we're, we're once again doing more studies to validate um, now and specifically look at genomic testing, genomic tested immunity plus animals and how, how their colostrum compares. But absolutely the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Um, the, the next question is, do you have any good bulls coming from sires like Randall or Alligator? Um, we had a session. We had a session on Facebook Live last week with Brian Carscadden. Uh, I, I think the product development team is much more suited to to answer that question than I am. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure that someone follows up with you, uh, Kirsten, to make sure that that you get the answer to that question because I'm not uh, not directly involved in our product development pipeline per se. So I, I can't tell you uh, exactly if if we do or don't have any any good bulls. But I'd I'd like to think the answer will be yes for you. Um, so once again, I'm um, getting close to wrapping up here. So if you have any, have any questions um, before we wrap, please, please throw them in the comments uh, to make sure that I, that I get around to them. Um, the one question I have left on my list here is, is how, do you, how do you strategically mate for immunity? I think the key to this is that um, with, with, any, with any genetic selection, you're going to make the most impact by making sure you select the right bulls for your farm. Um, to make sure that, that you have the right balance of traits, the right, the right balance of, of immunity plus bulls, maybe versus not, uh, depending on, depending on uh, what, your, what your primary goals are and what you're shooting for. But in terms of mating for it, what we've seen in, in the data often is that those really low immunity animals are the ones that, that have a lot of disease and, and perform poorly. And so making sure that you are doing some corrective mating on the bottom end of the herd, if, you, if you're genomic testing, especially for immunity plus, if you find those animals that are low, then, then making sure that if those animals are good enough animals otherwise to, to get progeny out of, that you make sure that you're, you're correctively mating to make sure that the next generation um, won't have that same deficiency of the immune system maybe that those animals have. Another question come in from Dan DeYoung. Uh, the thing I don't like about not having a number of immunity plus is it makes it hard to know what you, you aren't actually picking the worst for immunity plus. And, and there's, there's certainly some validity to that, and, and that will be the same whether you're talking about CMEX bulls or otherwise. Um, what I will say here is, is I know that the product development team will not, will not put bulls into the marketplace if they can avoid it. Where that bull is is extreme low or plus because it is CMEX's flagship brand. We value it in every single decision we make um, in the product development list. So we'd like to think that even the average bulls at CMEX um, will, will provide a positive impact on the immune system 
of, of the females in your herd as we, as we compare our population to itself. So our high immune bulls are the high within the CMEX population that is wholly selected for immunity. Um, but in general, um, understand that concern, but, but rest assured we try to avoid ever having animals that would be considered the worst for immunity in our lineup. Uh, so I'll, le I'll leave another 30 seconds or so here for any anyone else to add any questions in the comments. Um, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, anyone who's here live and anyone who's watching this afterwards, thanks for watching till the end. Um, certainly appreciate your time. Um, this has been fun. It's been a bit of a new experience for me being, being live and, and talking into the void a little bit like this, uh, but it's been great. So not seeing any questions, um, I'm going to again, thank you so much for all of your time um, and look forward to following up with, with any questions we might get after the session. Thanks.